I was recently looking at the new Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom game. It has loads of gadgets which you can use to complete the game, including a cart, sled, fan, a spring, and shock and beam emitters. There's also a stabiliser device which basically makes things go upright so vehicles can be made more stable, and you can also use it to make a catapult. I started to wonder if this would work in real life, and also remembered that I needed a way to make walking robots more stable, like my tripod robot, so it doesn't have to be as dynamic and has more time to take steps. I previously experimented with some small stabilisers which use gyroscopes to make wheeled robots balance, so that seems like a good place to start. A spinning mass produces something called gyroscopic precession. We've all seen spinning tops standing on their ends. However, if you start locking any of the axes in place, then they won't stand up anymore, so we need to be a bit more clever if we want to use a gyroscope to stabilise a robot and have control over it. If we move one axis of a gyroscope, then the precession causes a force in a perpendicular axis. This is because the spinning force and the control axis force combine, resulting in a force 90 degrees around the gyroscope in the direction it's spinning. When a spinning top is balancing, it's constantly precessing, constantly falling in one direction, but the resulting output force is 90 degrees around in the direction it's spinning, and as a result that makes another force 90 degrees around again. So we see this motion which makes it constantly wobble as it constantly falls. However, if we constrain one control axis, we can use the gyroscope to exert a reliable force in a perpendicular axis as we wish. In my previous builds, I measured the roll angle of the device with a solid-state inertial measurement unit, and built a controller from an Arduino to control the pitch of the gyroscope accordingly with a servo. This exerts a force back in the roll axis of the device to make it balance. I moved on from that using two gyros to make a two-wheel inline balancing robot, and also a one-wheel balancing robot which balanced forwards and backwards like a Segway, but balanced side to side using the gyros. Note this is different from a reaction wheel which spins a mass in either direction around a stationary centre point to make an opposing reaction force. My gyro units were pretty small though, and the gyros didn't exert a lot of force, so they only just about worked. The gyros in these were 3D printed with some ball bearings in internal pockets to give them mass. I want to make a much heavier duty unit for some big walking robots, so this time I'm using car disc brakes. Each disc is about 3.5kg, which is about 20 times more mass than the original 3D printed gyroscopes. We're going to use a belt drive to drive these discs around, so I'm printing some pulleys and I'm also printing some hubs to mount onto those discs so that we've got somewhere to put bearings. There's lots of parts to make here, we've got to make quite a heavy duty unit to hold these and we're actually going to make a pair of them. Just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lolzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. And thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project, all these parts are printed in ProPLA+. The disc brakes have five big holes, two holes which are tapped to M8, and two countersunk holes. I've made these hubs which have bearings mounted in them so we can spin the whole thing around smoothly, and those also have the similar keys in them, and two holes so that we can bolt them onto the discs. I'm just using some M8 studding in the disc there, and of course one hub fits either side, and we can bolt that up with some lock nuts. So those are my hubs fitted with a bearing either side. We've got some bright steel bar which tends to be quite well tolerant, so that fits well into the middle of the two bearings. And that's our axle that we're going to spin everything on. If we spin that by hand, then I can actually already feel the gyroscopic precession. If I try and move it in one axis, I can feel the perpendicular force. So that seems to be working quite well, and I think we're going to exert a lot of force. I fitted a pulley onto my hubs, so we can actually drive this with a motor. And I'm going to be using the good old brushless 6374 kV motors that you can get from Hobby King. The frame to build all of the parts that we're going to need is going to be made out of 2020 extrusion. I'm using drop-in T-nuts as usual so I can attach 3D prints and various brackets, and those just turn in and do up tight so we can attach those to the other pieces. I've also got some metal corner brackets to make sure I get my 90 degree angles right. At the bottom I've got the 90 degree metal brackets and I've also got 3D printed brackets across all of the corners. I've only got those at one end because at the other end of the whole assembly I need to put the motor and the disc mounting brackets. And that of course looks like a couple of clamps which are going to hold the 20mm bright steel bar and hold that disc, and I can position those up and down to tension the belt drive. So, as you'd imagine, the disc fits in there, and that spins round nicely, and I remembered to put the belt on as well, so that I can spin that with the motor, and I don't have to take it to pieces to get the belt on. At the bottom, there's a motor, and again, that's on brackets, so I can move it up and down and get that belt tension, and I've just 3D printed the pulley on here. 
I'm using a VESC ESC, or at least a clone of the VESC from Flipsky, and just an RC controller and an RC receiver, and I've got 12S LiPo, so around 50 volts, which should make it go really fast. But before we power that up, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is Opera One. Lots of things are browser-based these days, aren't they? So I use a browser a lot, and you probably do too. Opera One is a browser, but it's also more than that. I really love how it puts everything in one place, and that makes my working life, creating content mostly, more streamlined. Obviously, I produce content online, but it's not just on YouTube. Opera One integrates my other social media, including Twitter and Instagram, and also other apps like WhatsApp, Messenger, or Telegram if you use them, right there on the sidebar. And there's also a great feature called Tab Islands, which you can use to group together similar browser tabs to make your browser organisation much easier. Opera One has an integrated ad blocker and VPN, and those are right there built into the browser. And there's also integrated AI called Aria. Opera's AI is integrated seamlessly into the browser, and that's completely free and unlimited. You can ask Aria questions, have it explain, explore further, and even translate text for you. And I found it'll also write code, which of course I find quite useful. Opera One runs smoothly as well. The web's really active and animated these days. Opera One handles all of these features with a separate compositor thread that paints the active elements in the browser rather than using the UI thread. So animations run smoothly all the time and that makes a much better browsing experience. So check it out and install Opera One today and the link's in the description to this video. Right, let's power up a massive gyro. So yep, that's a little bit terrifying. There is a bit of off-centre wobble in it, which makes it walk a little bit, but it's actually not too bad for something I've just cobbled together, so I'm pretty happy with that. So if I pick it up and move it in one axis, which in this case is actually twisting it in its yaw axis, which is the vertical axis, so basically I'm just rotating it between my two hands, we can see we do get a perpendicular force that causes the bottom to swing out. And the faster I move it, the more force we get. So if I try and turn it as fast as I can, like a steering wheel, then basically we can see that bottom kicking out quite a lot, and doing it much quicker as well. And this exerts quite a lot of force, it's really hard to even hold it upright when I'm turning it. So this is going to be pretty good. So that does exactly what we want it to. So as I turn it this way, it's making a force this way. The motor helps as well, because that's quite heavy. And the belt drive means the motor's turning in the same direction. If it was a gear reduction, it would be turning in the opposite direction. And that would actually cancel out the gyroscopic effect with the mass of the motor and its own gyroscopic effect. So that's pretty good. But in order to get rid of gyroscopic precession, this wobble that we see in gyros standing still or spinning tops, and basically cancel that out, we're going to use two of these units. So yes, I've built another one exactly the same. The mass is building up on these quite a bit now. I've probably got 10 kilograms here. So those are going to spin in opposite directions, and then they're going to move in their control axis in the other direction. So now we need to mount these on something and have a motor that's going to control the actual active control axis. So we've got a base which is 3D prints, and in the 3D prints we've got some thrust bearings which take force from the top, and we've also got a normal bearing in the middle to hold that in the middle and stop it slipping out. The top of that's just got a peg that goes in the bearing in the middle and the other half of the thrust bearing. So if I put that on, it takes quite a lot of load on the top there, which is what we need. So of course those gyro units fit on there, and those get bolted onto the 2020, the same as the other parts, and the tops again have pivot points on, which will have a top on. And of course all that's fitted together with drop-in T-nuts and screws. On top of that we need to keep them in sync and we need to move them in opposite directions. So we've got these gear track pieces which fit on top there and you'll notice one is much longer than the other. On top of that we've got another piece that looks like the bottom but without the thrust bearings because it's not holding any force. We're only really holding the force at the bottom. And altogether it looks like this which is a top and bottom held on with some 2040 extrusion, so it's all nice and rigid. And those two gyros move in opposite directions. They will spin in opposite directions, and the control axis is in opposite directions. One track is longer, and that is so we can put the motor on to actually control it, which is quite a powerful 24 volt motor, which has the other spur gear on, and that is gonna fit onto the frame with a very simple bracket, 
so that I can position it and get that gear mesh tension correct. So hopefully that's fast enough and it's responsive enough to make this whole thing balance, but that remains to be seen. We do need to know what position this is at though, so I left one of those stubs a little bit longer and there's a grub screw in there which a pot can fit into, and that black bracket's going to be glued on. And that means I can get feedback to turn that motor into a servo, which is currently controlled with a BTS 7960 motor driver and an Arduino Mega. So I've got another pot, which I can use to drive that, so now when I turn it, we can turn that control axis and we can set the position using the feedback pot and that works pretty well. So it's just like a big servo which is turning that control axis. And we used an actual servo in the previous versions. I now have two ESCs, one each side, one for each of those brushless motors and I put this thing on a pivot point so we can see if we can actually make it exert some force. So sitting it there, spinning up the gyros till they go full speed and then turning that pot we can move the control axis. And we can see immediately that it exerts quite a lot of force. So that clearly can exert a force sideways when those gyros move in their control axis. So that's basically working. But in order to make this balance and make it balance other things like robots, we need to read the angle it's at and then go and make the gyro control axis respond accordingly. So I've added an MPU6050 inertial measurement unit which has a little Arduino attached to it and then it reads that data from it and sends the data over serial to the mega. So you can see here's the trace of the angle, as I move it in either direction we get a positive and negative swing. To make it balance I'm going to be using a PID controller and there's an Arduino library to make it easier. The balancing set point is the angle we wanted to balance at which in this case is zero. The PID controller then gives us an output which we give to the control axis to drive the position. The PID controller has three terms, proportional, derivative and integral. Proportional will give us a bigger output value as the input angle increases, which in this case drives the output control axis to a larger angle. But this isn't sufficient on its own to make it balance. The integral term is the most important term for balancing devices, and I've previously featured a video from Jack Monaco in which he builds a mechanical integrator and explains what integration is. Ultimately, the integral term is the area under the graph. The output will therefore continue to increase even if the input is constant, because time is progressing so the area gets bigger. So the integral term makes the output accelerate towards its target as the integrator tries to fix the error between input and set point over time. This can also cause overshoot though, so we need some derivative gain, and that is the tangent of the curve of the graph. So this tries to fix short term errors and makes the output respond more sharply. Since the gyroscopes only exert a force when the control axis moves, and a larger force the faster it moves, we should probably be driving the control axis velocity from the PID output controller rather than the position. In this case though we're driving the position and the control axis motor velocity does actually increase the bigger the error between the set point angle and where it actually is. It's hacky but it works and it also means that the gyro control axis is always centred when the device is upright and it never creeps like it would do if we just controlled its velocity. So I'm pretty happy that that can just about balance, but what can we put it on that's a bit more fun? Yes, it's a scooter! So I fixed that to the handlebars with some more brackets and it's just sat on the kick plate there, and that seems to be balancing alright. I put the battery off centre there to help balance up the other side where the control axis motor is, so it balances pretty much in the middle by itself. But obviously it needs the gyros to stay upright. Now I can slide this along and you can see it's clearly balancing on two inline wheels. If I'd actually motorised the back wheel and had a servo on the steering I could probably drive the whole thing along radio control. There are some oscillations in this and it will need retuning based on whatever I put it on, wherever that pivot point is, we'll need to retune that PID controller. But if I leave it alone for long enough it seems to settle. But if I give it a shove and mess about with it you can see those gyros in the control axis compensating and it kind of uncannily pushing itself upright again. So yep, seems to work alright, it can exert quite a lot of force, so I'm pretty confident we could use this on a walking robot. So it's not quite as good as the original, which can pick itself up from lying down, and seems to work in all axes, which would require another pair of gyros, but it does look like it's physically possible. 
So obviously we're going to need a much bigger tripod robot than this to carry something like this, but the plan would be that it would be much, much bigger than we'd have the gyro unit rotating around on the top, so it would rotate around over two legs and then it could pick up the third leg and balance using the gyros and then it would rotate around again over another two legs and pick up a different third leg and that's how it would walk along. But that's a whole other project.